We have an incredibly important $25 donation from Jessica36 that says, Honk! And with that glorious honk, we are all set. We have King Rhodes Tien with The Great Circus Mystery. All right, how you guys doing today? <coughs> all right, so yeah, I am King Rhodes Tien, and this is The Great Circus Mystery starring Mickey and Minnie. So that is a mouthful here. Uh, before we go ahead and start, I'm gonna introduce our couch. Um, right behind me with Knuckles, we have Eight. We have Amber Cyprin with Sonic. TGH with uh, Tails, and we have Supersonic over here. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, no, this is not a Sonic run, uh, but we are all pretty much Sonic runners, so they're kind of helping me out with some commentary, so we figured we still got to represent our uh, communities there. Um, so we're going to play as many, and we're going to start on character select. Uh, so if we'll count down, we'll start at five. We'll go five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, go. All right, so this game is made by Capcom, so it's one of the uh, games from way back when. Uh, it's a standard platformer, um, but there's a, they introduced a new mechanic in this game, and you're gonna see this here shortly, where we have different outfits that do different things. Uh, so we're just gonna kinda jump through this level. We're gonna hit the enemies in the exact way we want to, because it helps set up the end of this part here, where we can jump over these uh, like jack-in-the-boxes. And then we were already at the first mini boss. So this whole game is six levels. Each level has a mini boss and then a final boss that uh, ends the level here. So we're gonna start with this fireballer guy. So he has fireball, he throws at you. So we're gonna go for a quick kill. We're gonna hopefully, we didn't get it, his iframe stayed longer than we wanted to. So we have to do kind of like a medium fast kill, I guess. So his nose is obviously vulnerable, so we can just jump on his nose and that's the first boss right there. Nice. <laughs> So now we're gonna go see one of Minnie's friends here in about five seconds, jumping off of a little monkey there. We're gonna see Donald for about five more seconds. It's the only time we see pretty much any other character in this game. So he gives us this, uh, our first outfit, the vacuum cleaner. Uh, this is the least useful outfit in the run. We're pretty much gonna use it for the remainder of this level and then one boss fight towards the end of the game. Yeah, so the game temporarily becomes Luigi's Mansion 4. Mm -hmm. The long-awaited sequel to the game that just came out. <laughs> Are there any advantages to playing as Minnie over Mickey, or is it just a choice? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a choice. Okay. Funny story um. there. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, I, I believe when uh, he was learning the game, mm -hmm. or when he decided to pick up the game, he saw the world record runs, uh, picked Minnie, and he was just like, so uh, is there any reason why? He asked the same exact question, and he's like, no, nah, I just like Minnie. And, uh, any time he's tried to play as Mickey, mm -hmm. uh, it, it just it's does gone, it's not. It's gone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, does, it doesn't quite work for me. So uh, Minnie is Minnie. luckier than Minnie. Uh, yep. Minnie is luckier. <laughs> yeah, Minnie is luckier than Minnie. Yep. <laughs> Minnie is luckier than Mickey. Uh, so we're at the first um, like end boss level here. We got a lion. He can kind of troll you a little bit. So he has his hair on his head, his mane. And he trolled me a little bit more. So his nose becomes vulnerable. We can't do anything to speed up the fight. Wow, he's being a big troll. We want, there we go. So we want to take off all of his mane before we can hit him here. And we should be good now. Yeah, his nose is vulnerable as long as his mane isn't there. Mm -hmm. So you don't even need to take the entire mane off, just like the top uh, left two there balls of mane hair. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna change clothes here just uh, because it makes the cutscene, if you can call it a cutscene, yeah, the very beginning of faster. the next stage a tiny bit faster because you would it would force a change anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's the first level of the Haunted Circus. So now we're moving into the jungle. So we see these lonesome ghosts. Um, they actually appear in a few other uh, Mickey Mouse games. They're actually Mickey Mania too. Mickey Mania as well. Um, I was like, man, that level. got a sequel? Yeah, no. <laughs> that game is great. <laughs> Uh, so they give us our jungle outfit. So the jungle outfit comes with a hook, and we're able to grab on these like um, hook pieces and these vines. The vines right here are the only part in the game that you can actually uh, get faster speed, and I was actually able to maintain that speed um, coming off of the vine, which doesn't happen all the time. Yeah, you lose speed um, when you're on the ground, so I, I, I'm going to assume it's the number mm -hmm. of frames you're on the ground for, um, and you lose momentum that way. But if you stay in the air by jumping, um, it is probably very mm -hmm. close to frame perfect yep. to maintain your momentum throughout the stage off the vines. So we're at the second mini boss, which is, which is a turtle. Um, a lot of these bosses are going to be RNG. You're going to see a lot of RNG in this game. 
and he basically does one of two things. He comes out of the water or he stays in the water um, and like does a spin thing where you can't hit him. Um, the first cycle, he always does the same thing where he comes out, then he stays in. After that, he can come out of the water twice or stay in whatever might, might do. So right there was bad RNG. Um, so that's pretty much here. So if you have any time for some donations, we, have, we can do a few of those. Sure thing. We have $200 from TikTok1231. Uh, Thank you for all you do and to all the crew, runners, and staff. One more? Yeah, yeah, one more. We have $340 from I Am Nomad. Doesn't say anything, but thank you so much for your donation. So we're hoping he comes out two more times here in a row. So I still feel we've had a little bit of bad RNG here for this fight. And if I'm not mistaken, he won't come out of the water uh, more than twice in a row. No. He will mm -hmm. then be forced to do something else. Yeah. Oh, so we've only got, I think, a one cycle each time here. It's a little bit longer boss fight, but it's all right. And again, there's nothing that you can't really do to, to make this speed this up here. I think we're down to one hit left. It's hard to count to five. So uh, one thing I noticed, like, when Rhodes asked me to do commentary, I was like, what is this game? Because I've never played I played other Mickey Mouse games like Mickey Mania, uh, World of Illusion, Castle of Illusion. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that jumped out at me was immediately the costume mechanics and we as go. well as the drop-in, drop-out multiplayer that they've got going on. Mm -hmm. And apparently the costume mechanics, good fight, by the way, mm -hmm. despite the RNG. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, one thing that leapt out at me was the uh, the costume mechanics. And we're actually going to do yep. uh, one skip. This is one of the few there skips, plus the damage boost here okay. um, to be able to skip going from left to right, the left to right, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. So that was uh, really nice there. So There's momentum mechanics there. Yep. Yeah. And you can actually kind of get trolled in that section because if you do a frame perfect uh, jump, it actually will uh, cause you to, to not take the damage mechanic and act like the movement, and you get stuck where you can't actually jump on the snake and damage boost your way up there. So that was very nice. We didn't get lucky. All right. So the last little mini platform in here before we come to one of the biggest troll bosses in the game. Um, again, when we talk about RNG, this game is very, very RNG-based, um, believe it or not. So we're going to this um, giant ape here, and we're hoping for eight straight hits. He's just going to jump into us. So we've got yeah. one. This ape is called Sonic and, the Hedgehog because he does this. Yeah. So that's already bad RNG again. So um, he can stay in the tree for three times or come out, so that's a little bit better luck that we had that there. So we're at three hits, four... Five. Don't spin dash. <laughs> Got this. Six. Come on, one more. Nice. Perfect. All right, that's, yeah. nice. that's very good. So not 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 the worst fight in the world. Um, normally that's a big reset point because he can spin a bunch of times, hang out in the tree, and then you're just losing a minute for no reason. Yeah, because even though he did spin dash once uh, after the first hit, he can actually stay in the tree. Mm -hmm. Like he can bob his head out up to three times before forcing himself to come back down. But thankfully, I think he only he did, only did that it once. once. He came straight back down, pretty much. That was good. All right, so we're now back to this, the third and final outfit we're going to get in this game. The third level here is our Western outfit. So the Western outfit is the most useful outfit in this game. We're going to go between this and the jungle the most. Um, so you can shoot a little pop gun, and you also have this charge attack that you're going to see me do here. Um, that's the only way you can really speed up Minnie's uh, movement ability now. Um, from here on out, you're also going to see me lay down a bunch. Uh, when I need to jump, because one thing about um, the Western outfit here, I forgot to charge up a little bit, is uh, if you j press the jump button when her sprite is actually off the ground, you won't actually get the jump input. So you have to jump when the little horse is actually on the ground. So it can be a little bit uh, hard to do when you first learn the game. So here we have um, the portrait boss, and he can do one of two attacks. He can either spit fire onto the ground, which is what we want him to do, uh, because the animation is faster, or he can do this. Uh, he can just give this like weird gaze at these books, and they come to life, and they're like, yeah, we're going to fight you now. Mm -hmm. um, but all you do at that point is you want to be on the opposite side of where the books are coming from, so you can jump on his head, and then also jump on the books. If you try to do it from the same side, it just does not work out. Uh, that's a, this is a great time for a couple more mm -hmm. donations. Sure thing. Uh, something tells me y'all like Sonic, so I have a few people who are super excited for our 06 incentive. We have $20 from Poison33. I got out of bed to donate immediately when I heard there was a Sonic 06 incentive. All right, that was terrible RNG. We only got one fire the whole time. We, we, I think you can get six fires. It's like perfect RNG. 
Um, so we only got it once, so that's a little bad luck again. So now we're going to like this little spinning room. So the only way to speed this section up is to make sure you're grabbing the correct side of the lantern. So that first lantern, I actually walked past it and jumped back because it put Minnie in the right spot. And as soon as it stops spinning, I can jump right off. Um, there's only a few of them, so this is the last lantern. As soon as I land, I'm gonna change back to our Western outfit. So now we're finally into the part of the game where we're gonna kind of like switch back and forth um, through. We're hopefully gonna hit some good charges. Hopefully hit a few uh, nice little shots here. Just gonna charge dash through that. If I'm not mistaken, this costume mechanic is actually present in two other games. Like this is mm -hmm. part of a trilogy, if, yep. I'm not, it uh, is. if I'm not wrong. Didn't want to take it there. Yeah, so I think the Western outfit is in all the games. I can't remember the exact outfits that are in the other ones um, for what we got there, but uh, I know the Western outfit's in another one. I think the jungle's in another one as well. The first game, I think actually has five outfits, if I uh, recall correctly. Okay. Also, that death, while not un uh, intentional, is a great demonstration of uh, just how accessible this run can be <laughs> for uh, newer runners. Uh, if you die for any reason, you just kind of respawn exactly where you died. Um, and game overing mm -hmm. is also less punishing than yep. most games. Uh, most retro games will make you start either from the very beginning of the game again or from the very beginning of the stage. No, this is from the last checkpoint mm -hmm. that you, uh, you managed to activate. Which, is, which means game overs are just not very punishing and it makes it a very uh, new runner friendly game. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've come to the boss at the haunted house here. So it's a ghost. Um, one thing I didn't mention with our Western outfit is, is when you use your pop gun, it counts as two damage and when you jump, it counts as three. So we want to actually jump as much as we can on the ghost's head. Um, I think we're done actually one, one hit left, yes, okay. So if you jump on him four times, you can shoot, shoot him with the last hit. So uh, what we didn't see there was Minnie was coming out of the top of the haunted house and was gonna use her jungle outfit to slide down a rope. Well, somebody cuts the rope and she falls down into our next level, which is gonna be the cave. So that was one of the, one of the few levels that we don't actually have to change our outfit to because it automatically defaults the outfit change at the end. So this is gonna be the only auto scroller part of the game, but we actually can still technically speed this up. Yeah, normally what this <laughs> game wants us to do is it wants us to uh, turn into the Western outfit and like go back and forth between this and the minor one to be able to climb walls, destroy those yellow blocks with the pop gun, so on and so forth. Uh, but we're actually not going to change to the Western outfit because that causes us to lose time by freezing the entire game so many can change. So he's just gonna take an intentional death right here? Mm -hmm. And just skip changing into that outfit altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this costs him a life, but when you die, you actually just happen to respawn back in the center mm -hmm. of the screen because you can't respawn exactly where you died due to it being a vertical auto-scroller. So that is like one of the other, mm -hmm. one of the only other major, like, if you can call it call major skip, skip. Yeah, 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 in the run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, outside and of that, it's straightforward. Yeah. So this next section coming up is actually gonna be, it's a little tricky when you first start learning it. We're gonna damage boost through some spikes here. Uh, we have to do a little, um, little turn back. And I didn't do the turn back, so that's great. So we're gonna do it again here. So I may actually end up taking a death here, which is okay. Oh, I didn't take it, cool. So if you do the turn backs like I didn't do, you'd actually catch it on the right cycle. So now I'm gonna probably have to wait just a little bit right here for these, um, I don't really know what they are. They're like lasers that come out of like, what they look like crystals. Yeah, and they so, don't actually hurt you, which is no, you intriguing. Can. Yeah. So you can stand on, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I technically missed a cycle there, but we got through without dying, so it helps keep our life count where we need to be. So now we're another mini boss. I'm a jackhammer boss. There's actually no RNG for this. Well, the little bit of RNG, he shoots these when he jackhammers, he, uh, the little things come from the roof. So it can be tricky from where it comes out at. But we're gonna actually change as soon as that breaks. So the screen will scroll. We don't have to actually wait for it. Um, otherwise we would you know, change our outfit and the whole thing would freeze and we'd have to wait for the animation. So it saves a very minuscule amount of time, but still saves some nonetheless. Um, we also have this, it's a short platforming area right before the final boss of this stage. Um, a couple key jumps um, to jump over. We don't really want to grab those hooks, uh, but it's hard to kind of get underneath it. I looked like a lump of cheese that was just rolling down mm -hmm. the hill behind you. It's, I think it's the dinosaur's egg, but it does look like a cheese, cheese roll. <laughs> 
and the bosses don't make a lot of sense because we're trying to figure out what happened to the circus, why our friends disappeared, and now we're in a cave with a giant dinosaur. So it's <laughs> kind of an interesting storyline, but whatever works. The lore is very mm -hmm. uh, varied here. So uh, the dinosaur can come out at three parts. He can come out really, really high in the middle, or he can come out really, really low, or he could technically not come out at all. So we want him to come out each time his tail moves and he stops. He wants his face to come out. Um, if he jumps out, comes out really high, I have to jump off of one of his little, like, spikes on his back to reach him. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I'm going to have to shoot him in the face. So far, we've gotten actually really, really good luck, and he's come out within uh, jumping distance here. Yeah, because remember, jumping does one more damage than mm -hmm. shooting does. It's actually good timing there. Okay, Ooh. we got him. So if you take a hit, you can't actually recover fast enough. You kind of have to shoot him. Nope, just missed him. Something tells me this dinosaur has chronic neck problems. I think so, he would. <laughs> and he blows a uh, gas from his nose, so he's very powerful. Yep. Can I also say how much I appreciate the, uh, the, the jumping on an enemy sound effect in this game? <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. And he didn't come out that time there, so a little bit of bad luck. There we go. All right. So that's level four there, yes. Four, four. Yeah, yeah we had to figure there out how go. to count for a yep. moment. I said it's, it's hard to count to five, so let alone six. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can confirm this. <laughs> yeah. So now we're at the Frozen Plains, which is arguably the least favorite run of anybody that, that runs this game, and it's mainly due to the end. Um, it's got some unique platforming aspects of it here. Um, and we're going to change our outfits actually three times um, when we go through this here. But the, there's a water that rises up and down. It's all cycle-based, so if you do it the same every single time, you'll be on the right spot. Um, we're going to take a damage there so we can quickly pass through this section because there's a heart that refills it. Um, and we're already now to the next mini-boss. So we're at this what I call the spinner of death because when I first learned this game, I would die here so many times. Um, I got here faster than I normally do, so I actually had to wait a little bit longer to hit him. You can only hit him when he comes out. Um, and again, we could shoot him if we want to, but we want to be able to jump on him to make it faster. So one more hit, and there we go. That's actually fast, very good. So we got on top, because if the water comes down, you have to wait for the water to come back up to get up there. Or we'd have to change to our jungle outfit, climb, change back here, because when we're in the water, it's really slow to swim. However, we still do have a charge animation. Still not as fast as on the ground, but we can still charge our way through it. And when we also charge, we can't take damage. So I took damage right before I actually wanted to get rid of my charge. So I have a, I have a question yep. about this water level. What's with the clear bubbles? Because clearly Minnie and uh, supposedly Mickey as well can breathe underwater. Apparently now, um, they're, they kind of go everywhere. I actually don't know. However, I have taken damage once or twice by what seems like to be the bubble. I've got a clip where out of nowhere, I just took damage in the middle of the water and bubbles were there. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know if that was actually an intended mechanic or if it was just kind of like a little glitch or something. Like, uh, that was just a weird aesthetic mm -hmm. choice. It's like, yeah, let's make everything blue filtered except for these random spots mm -hmm. here and have them do absolutely nothing other than just not be filtered. There we go, okay. So we had to uh, jump across there a little bit. Um, we've got our last little section before the worst boss in the game. And it's not bad because it's not difficult. Uh, this is the biggest troll boss that we're going to fight. Hopefully, uh, we can get him with a one or two cycle. It'd be nice. Well, that's already not a one cycle. So he can disappear like that. And he's already done it twice. Please don't um, disappear. <laughs> the worst thing about him is you're going to see me. So the whole boss fight is I got to suck him up in my vacuum and take some of his cloud, um, cloud off. Now, if he disappears two or three times in a row, he can actually regain health um, and just get bigger again. So he's being a big troll right now. It just looks like the kind of boss that will troll you. Like, mm -hmm. you don't even need to fight it to know that this boss is probably a troll. Like, this is Krako <laughs> and, from Kirby and <laughs> Losis from Luigi's Mansion 1 oh, yes. combined, and it's oh, just yes. awful. You are getting memes. <laughs> like, you are getting super this is trolled. Terrible. <laughs> See if he gets bigger here. Like, the RNG oh. of these bosses have been absolutely have been pretty rough. unkind. They have. And he can attack, so he got bigger there. So he regained health, and he's still disappearing on me. Oh, man. <laughs> So, and he can also attack from one to three times in each, like, cycle. So if he starts an attack, he can attack once, twice, or three times. And he just keeps disappearing. So this is where I would just shut the console off while I walk <laughs> upstairs and be like, all right, I'm done. 
Don't do that here, though. <laughs> I'll try to avoid from, from that. <laughs> All right, so I think we're good. This should be the last suck up there. There we go. Yeah. And we change back. So now we're going to the final level. Finally got through that there. Cracker lost this is dead. Yes. <laughs> That was like the big reset point of the it game, is by the way. It is massive. So now we move to the final uh, level of the game. Our only little cutscene here that plays, you can't skip it. Um, we come out of these, this bush. I don't even know how we got to bush. We go from like frozen plains to like a jungle forest again. And Minnie's like, we finally made it. Hum, now where is that no good Baron Pete hiding? However, there's no place in the story that shows that Baron Pete is the evil guy. We just know in the castle that's where he's hiding. It's like, ah, the classic Disney thing. And yeah. like, yes, uh, something went wrong, so we're going to blame it on Pete. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he's probably not even involved, but we're going to blame it on Pete anyways. All right, so this is the, mm, very good. But that was a precise jump there that we had actually time in between the spike ball and yeah, the candlestick. damage boost there, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah, so you can damage boost, and it pushes you in the right direction, but we can avoid damage if we need to. So now we're going to change. We're going to change, I think, two or three times in this level here. Um, going through. So we're back to the Western outfit here for the next little two fights. So this is the only level that has actually too many bosses. Um, something about Capcom that Capcom does like to reuse boss fights. Um, and we're going to see that again here. We're going to see the first mini boss, and I think it was the third mini boss here. So we're, here comes the fireball guy. But this is even a little bit more trivial where we have our pop gun. We're just going to keep shooting him. When he gets close, we're just going to jump on his head. So normally you can't hit him when he looks behind you and when he's uh, has his iframes. We're going to make it a little, little easier there when we actually have an outfit this time. So there's part one. Uh, then we're just going to jump down here. We don't want to fall in the hole. I've done that plenty of times. You actually fall out of that level like in the air. So if you don't, if you press right to move forward, you just fall down the hole and die. So this is the portrait boss mm -hmm. uh, reprise and it is no different. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is actually a great time for some yep. donations if we've got them. Sure thing. We have ten dollars from Game Watch and Mama. The Great Circus Mystery starring Mickey and Minnie was one of my favorite games to play as a kid. I used to make my parents play it with me for hours. <laughs> I can't wait to see it be destroyed in the speed run. I'm watching with my two-year-old and soon-to-be-born baby in Euro, cool. both of whom I look forward to playing this game with in the future. So you guys have one more. Sure thing. Very quick one. Wink, wink. Hundred dollars from Fast B. Gotta go fast. <laughs> so this is actually a much kinder yes, uh, refight here oh, than uh, very good the first there. fight. Got a lot more flames there than books. So now we move to the last platforming section of the game. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, difficult than most other parts of the game, which you would expect kind of in the last level here. Uh, we got these little statues that shoot fire at you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get really close. I'm going to do like a little mini turn back. Um, that way the fire can't reach us because it can reach around the ground. Then we're going to hopefully get on this. There we go. We're just going to ride across. It's a little bit faster than just moving around. Hit the wall, that bonk there. Now these cannons, when their eyes open, they'll shoot out those little cannonball. So you got to be a little careful here. See if we can get past that. Good. All right, cool. No damage. Very good. Nice. nice. All right, so now we're going in the last fight here. We're going to change to the Western outfit. So a good thing about this is the animation actually goes when you change your outfit. So this is Pete here. Um, Pete has two phases. I need to shoot this crown off his hand, off his head, and I keep hitting his hand here. There we go. We're just going to hit him eight times. And that goes for phase one. Okay. So now we're in the final phase of the game here. This is the goofiest looking final boss, by the way, and you'll see, you'll understand in just a moment as soon as this thing appears. Like, I just don't understand how the neck of this boss works. <laughs> so it's still a mystery. We don't know what we're gonna get here. And now we have Pete the Dragon. Oh. Yeah, and uh, his head just kind of like, his, oh. I am yeah. not sure his neck, is, his head is attached properly. <laughs> and I thought the dinosaur had neck problems. <laughs> Yeah, no, like this, this is... <laughs> this is something else. I think time will be on the last hit. Time. There we go. Cool. GG. There GG. we go. Um, now this is our favorite part of the game. We're only cutting and play this for a second here. Uh, I want to give a shout out again to GDQ staff. Thanks for having me be able to showcase this game. Uh, this was a game that I got to play when I was a young kid and just kind of picked up as a uh, break from my maid speed game. So it's kind of cool that I got to play this in front of here. Uh, I want to thank my wife for letting me come down here. She's staying back in Tennessee while I get to take another week off of work and come and play some games. Uh, so that's a good uh, 
Good thing for her. Thanks for my couch. You guys were awesome. Um, Thanks for having not. us. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> you guys have anything else? Um, no, uh, just shout outs to T-Posing mm -hmm. plushies. The T-Posing trio. Yeah. So we do have like, in like 10 seconds here, I'll do, we want to do one <laughs> other thing with the cutscene here. Everyone's favorite um, GDQ meme that isn't honk now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do this real fast. Oh, no. So they're thanking oh, us. God. Oh, I got to do it for Tage now. <laughs> oh, no. So you got to uh, ball. I mean, you can yell the first word, Amber, and then I'll yell the second one there. I'm just going to I'm just gonna yell, like... Yeah. So we're going to play. So Minnie's going to play catch with Pluto here. Let's play catch. <laughs> Minnie is actually very, very jacked. You can't see it. You don't think that? Yeah, be, behind those noodle arms is a she's very go, strong mouse. She's going to yeet, yeet the orb. Yeet, yeet. <laughs> all the way out there. Just and it's into gone the next forever. dimension. Wow. And we'll gone. never see it again. Yeah. So that orb is gone forever. And then Pluto went missing trying to find it. Yeah, Pluto's gone. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it for us. Um, I think we're good. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for having us. Mm -hmm. cool. Incredible run by King Rhodes. Thank you so much. Huge shout outs again. Hello, everyone. Welcome to AGDQ 2020. We're heading up to the end of the Super Nintendo block with Donkey Kong Country 3. Seen a lot of people pretty hyped for it. Y'all seem pretty hyped for it. Yeah, hype! Yeah, how rude of me not to do the hype kind of deal while talking about it, right? I'm also seeing a lot of a lot of mean words towards Kitty. Like, come on, you got to be kiddying me. Oh, come on! I will not apologize for art. Also, I have I'm I'm leaving soon. I had to at least once. I'm gonna run a quick Twitch ad. We'll be right back. Hello again, friends. We're going to do a quick uh, word from our sponsors here. Huge shout outs to the Yeti, creating amazing merchant apparel for uh, video game culture. You should definitely check them out at theyeti.com.
I'll read a few donations here. We have $25 from Heather45. Run, run, run as fast as you can. They can't catch you. You're the speedrunner, man. Setting this towards naming Wingle Jotaro in Pokemon Sapphire. Ura! That is a bid war coming up uh, quite a bit later for the Wingle's name. Currently, it is 2N, so if you want a Jotaro to win, uh, you are about 1,500 away, and then Flappy Boy is following a bit behind that. We have $100 from Tom41. It's some use. Put this towards this T Sonic 2006 bonus game. We're getting so close to that bonus game, friends. Currently 4,000 away. $25 from Patrick Schuff. Thank you for supporting such a great cause. Thank you. $10 from Dare Womp Dare. Good morning, GTQ. Looking forward to a fun-filled week of speedruns and no work productivity. Shout out to the guy in the front row that's been keeping the party going all morning. You rock, dude. Let's see that Sonic 06 run. $10 from the Mr. Jester. Sonic 06, you say? Take my money. And with that, we are ready for the interview with the Sonic Color Runners. No, Steve, I'm, I, I'm telling you, it looks a lot better now. They used to have the eyes, like, up here and just, like, real small. And he was super tall. It was a little creepy. But that, that sounds, oh, oh, that hey. Uh, awesome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello. My name is Hello. Jay Hobbs. I am currently joined by Critical Sid, one of our fantastic mm -hmm. Sonic runners this uh, marathon. You're going to be running Sonic Colors coming up just a little bit here in the marathon after uh, Donkey Kong Country 3, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just wanted to kind of ask you a few questions here just to let everybody know about this run, people who might not know. What is it about Sonic Colors out of the Sonic games that makes you want to run it? I know you run several of them, but what is it that brings you back to Sonic Colors time and time, and time again? I do run several, yeah, but at Sonic Colors, I kind of keep coming back to it because it's just one of the most perfect mixes for me in terms of good optimized gameplay and breaking out of bounds and doing crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, it is a really good balance, and uh, out of the, all of the boost games, it's the one that has the most you know, tight, planned out boost management. Mm -hmm. So that adds a lot of dynamic to the run for me. And the, uh, by the boost games, you're talking mostly about like the 3D Sonics that had the more yeah, modern mechanics. Yeah, talking about like it. Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, Sonic yeah. Generations, and Sonic Forces. Right. Which I all tried at some point uh, to run except for Generations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that for Frogadoc. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. The Greek god himself. Exactly. Speaking about people who are not normally in America, uh, where are you yeah. normally reside from, if you want to kind of give a shout uh, out? Yeah, I'm normally... I'm, uh, I reside in the Netherlands, and uh, for some reason, I find myself here in America right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you've been to a couple GDQs now and everything. How's, uh, how's uh, yeah. that been, the uh, travel, and seeing them kind of evolve over time as well? How's it feel? It's the, yeah, I've definitely felt like it's been a big improvement. My first one was SGDQ 2017, mm -hmm. and uh, in regards to that, it's grown so much. It's pretty huge, and it's also... It's quite nice. I've also been to an RPG Nimmer break, for instance, and for me, it's always a nice joke that's like, it's all America, but all the different stages have such a different feel to them. Right. So it's like <laughs> RPG Nimmer break in Utah and uh, SDQ in Minnesota, and now Florida. It's just completely different. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, it, it, it's super I, cool. I come from a country that's the, the size of like a small state. In right. That. <laughs> so. Well, we'll get back to the run here. So with Sonic Colors, you have all these different wisps, right, that, yeah. are, that really completely change the run and affect different, uh, every level differently. What would you say are kind of your favorite wisps or the ones that you think just kind of make the speed run what it is? Laser is definitely one of my favorites just by the amount of stuff you can do with it. It's one of the most useful ones in breaking it, and, and you'll see that during the run itself as well. But... Um, and one of my least favorites is Spike Wisp, but we'll get to that in the run. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also really like Cube Wisp because it's blue. Okay. 
And it doesn't have much use, but it's blue. <laughs> but it's blue. It's blue. Hey, <laughs> colors are important. <laughs> it's, it's only colors, of course. Yeah, exactly. I also managed to uh, actually sneak the U into the schedule. It's yeah, colors I noticed <laughs> that. I noticed that because I had to enter it into Damn, the, you're American thing. spelling. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, for somebody who might not have caught Sonic Colors before, mm -hmm. um, you are running the Egg Shuttle run. Yep. Uh, and that is actually kind of not just the base campaign. It's, it's like actually the challenge mode, right? Well, yep. What exactly is kind of different about this? or Why this category over another? So the nice thing about Egg Shuttle is that uh, normally in an any percent run, you would have to unlock all of the Wisps before you actually get to use them. So a lot of the earlier stages tend to be just a little bit slower and you can't do as many things in there. Um, but in actual, they are all lo uh, like uh, unlocked from the very start, and uh, all of the boost that normally you uh, start every stage without boost, but in actual, the boost carries over between stages. Oh, wow. so that allows for a lot more nice boost management, some alternate routes here and there, uh, some exclusive tricks. And uh, me having to practice on emulator because I can't actually make the boost carry over. I was going to say, <laughs> like, I have to imagine that makes practicing quite difficult. But. Uh, m most of them I've actually just managed on GameCube. It's only recently that uh, w when people just actually started routing more stages with, with boost that mm -hmm. I've had to finally give in and practice on emulator. <laughs> Damn you, Avi. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I just got a couple more questions for you. So yeah. uh, I want to... Say, one thing I like to ask about a lot of different runs and stuff mm -hmm. is for somebody out there who is not familiar with Sonic Colors and maybe wants to tune in, but they want a reason to tune in, what's one spot in the run they can really be looking forward to? Like, it, around what time in the run should they really look for that big trick, that big, that big event? See, I used to say Asteroid Coaster, but at this point, I think every world has, except for Starlight Carnival, has a lot of action in it. Oh, yeah. So the, the, actual, the actual breaks, the, the action already starts at uh, the very first stage. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. So you just got to tune into the beginning of the run. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, I, I still say that Asteroid Coaster is definitely a highlight. Yeah. There's a lot of cool tricks in there, a lot of, like, with gravity defying and whatnot. Mm. Just alternating gravity and out of bounds in... Makes for a fun time. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. <laughs> uh, well, I think with that, I was just going to ask, do you have any other, you know, shout-outs or anything? Anything you want to say to your fellow Sonic runners or uh, anybody out there or Sonic fans? Uh, well, I definitely have some shout-outs to the entire uh, Sonic Colors community uh, because 2019 has kind of been a renaissance for the game. We have never seen that much activity, a lot of new big breaks, and not a lot of new runners, a lot of active runners returning. So that was actually very great to watch. I wish I could have more time to participate in that, but unfortunately I didn't. And um, other than that, I would say, brush your teeth, eat your veggies, and donate to Sonic 06. <laughs> Especially that last one. Yes, very important. Yeah, we right, got we got right there. It's right there. Sonic 06 shirt right there. Blaze Silver. Yeah, we got some Sonic 06 fans in the crowd. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure fan is the right word, but... Yes. <laughs> you get a Sonic, a Sonic 6 fan right here. <laughs> of course. Thanks for being with me, Sid. Of course. And uh, I, I think with that, we're uh, pretty much just I ready still to... Love this. Oh. So, so anyway, Angel, still... that's why Iggy Koopa is my fifth favorite of the Koopa Kids. He's I think a lot of people going. undervalue him because you fight him so early in Super Mario World. But it's been quite really, distracting. He's one of the, the top interview. one. Oh, oh, hey, hey, I'm so, sorry. I was just telling Angel about that, that prize we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. You, you haven't stopped since the last interview, have you? No, no. Oh, crap. The prize. I, yeah. I gotta go. Good. I'm glad that Angel was was he bothering you? Was he being the guy at the party who won't stop talking about his Sonic fan fiction? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Well Sent, what do you actually got for us? I, I got some absolutely great stuff for you. So like I was mentioning, uh, we have a beautiful Koopa Kids print from uh, Maria Ochoa. Um, $10 minimum donation from now until the end of Donkey Kong Country 3. All the stuff I'm talking about right now ends after Donkey Kong Country 3, which is coming up next. So make sure to get your donations in. And while you're getting your donations in, as everyone keeps mentioning, make sure to get them in for that uh, Sonic 06 bonus run. You guys want to see it. It is broken in all of the right ways, and it's, it's just a great experience to watch. Uh, so for $15, again, from now until the end of Donkey Kong Country 3, you could be entered to win a beautiful... Luma and Hungry Luma plushie set. Two hand knit plushies for the price of one, effectively. They're both adorable. One's got its mouth wide open, ready to, you know, feed its star bits. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't have any star bits on me. I've got, um, I got, I got a room card. I don't, I don't think it wants that. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know what you got. It's super adorable. You could put it somewhere. $15 minimum donation. Definitely get that in. Now, from our friend Kevin uh, Rome Arts, we have a beautiful little Donkey Kong Country banner of uh, Donkey and Diddy holding hands. There's some bananas around it. You can see a great picture of it on our tracker by heading over to gamesdoneclick.com. Um, love the artwork of it. I think it's like a foot or two long. It's super cool. $15 minimum donation from now until the end of DKC3. Uh, now, also until the end of DKC3, we have... Oh, Got to reach down here for it. 
a beautiful metal replication of the Kremlin coin from uh, DKC2. So, I mean, hey, you could get your very own Kremlin coin. It's uh, metal backed on one side. It's got, you know, nice uh, Donkey Kong bananas on the other side of it. Ah, thank you very much for zooming in on it. There we go. Take a look at that coin. It's a $15 minimum donation. It looks super great. And, you know, while we are so close up, let me show you our wonderful next prize uh, from Elissi. We have this absolutely beautiful Meowser Amiibo. It's uh, a Bowser Amiibo repainted to be like a Meowser from uh, Super Mario World 3D. Uh, everyone loves the cat suit power up, even Bowser. $15 minimum donation for a functioning and beautiful Amiibo. How could you go wrong? Uh, now from our good friend Noontime Natu, we have an absolutely amazing rendition of the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door uh, world map done in watercolor. It is super amazing. You have to go over to gamesandquick.com. Check out a picture of it on the tracker. Uh, I love it. You're going to love it. It's actually pretty big. I think it's like a foot by a foot and a half. It's a $20 minimum donation from now until the end of DKC3. So make sure to get those donations in. And uh, guys, Last but not least, we certainly have this absolutely beautiful uh, Control Stick Pro arcade controller for the SNES. It's a SNES stick, and it, it's, it's just great. It's got great quality to it. It's a $25 minimum donation. You got a handcrafted wooden exterior with a controller point up front. So, uh, I mean, hey, you can stick in a, a SNES controller uh, cable that comes included with it, attached to your Super Nintendo. You can get a USB adapter, attach it to your PC. You know, play whatever you want with the stick. And uh, the, the quality on it is great. The buttons, they feel good. They're very clicky. They, they remind me of my old days in the arcade. That's some good Sanwa hardware right there. That's what you'll like to see. $25 minimum donation from now until the end of uh, DKC3. And guys, of course, when we're talking about prizes, we've got to talk about our grand prize. It's $200, but it's cumulative throughout the event. So hey, donate $25 now. Get yourself in for everything I just talked about over those last two prize segments, and get yourself an eighth of the way to our grand prize, which is a custom replica from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. They're the guys who've been making the Hylian Shield and Master Sword that we've had the past couple events. We got another one. It's beautiful. Um, but hey, maybe you want it with some like different colors on the blade, uh, on the, uh, the hilt. They can do that because they'll customize it for you. We also have, uh, as an option, a lovely uh, Zelda guitar. You could have it as a guitar, you could have it as a bass, maybe mess with the colors. They can do that. Or if neither of those options sounds interesting to you, you can work with them to design a custom piece. Uh, now, restrictions do apply, and you're going to have to head over to gamesdonequick.com to view those. And you should anyway, because that's where you're going to find all the upcoming information about speedruns that are going to be in the marathon, incentives you can put those donations towards, and wonderful prizes you could win with those donations. That's going to be all for me, so let's throw it back up to the front as we get ready for Donkey Kong Country 3 with Void, 103%. Let's get hyped for it. Oh, come on, y'all. I know you can get more excited than that. Let's hear it right now. It is wonderful to be with you, y'all. I'm Sky Bills. I'm going to be your host for DKC3. Before we start, a couple donations here. We have $100 from DBX1 Hitter. 75 that says, good luck to my man Void on the DKC 103% run. There is no one better to finally showcase this run at GDQ. Yep. $20 to Janny Boy from Janny Boy that says, good luck, Void.